just a hack. It's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome back here on Hack City. Joe DeLeon, Sean Anderson, two former college football players from the University of Rhode Island. Today, we're going to be talking about our stats perform top 25 ballots. Sean did a solo one last week. I think going forward, we're going to try and do uh, one once a week. One of us will try to do one talking about breaking down why we have certain teams placed where we are and mostly focusing on maybe some more of the highly talked about controversial in a way teams that have sparked a little bit of a debate on who deserves to go where. Before we do that, though, Sean, can you just tell our listeners uh, about Bet Online? Yeah, why not? Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Thursday Night Football. Joe, do you know who's playing tonight? What do you mean? Do you know who's playing in Thursday Night Football? Oh, yes, it's Chiefs Broncos. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, Smash Chiefs. That is going to be uh, what you should do at Bet Online on AG. That's where you need to go if you want to smash the Chiefs versus arguably the worst team in the NFL in the Denver Broncos. They're bad. They're dumb. Their coach stinks. You know what Kansas City is? The opposite of that. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So I want to start us off with what is the most controversial team right now to talk about, which is Montana. So last week, I think it was justified to remove Montana, to completely take them out of the ballot. But they had a pretty nice win against UC Davis. That UC Davis win doesn't have a, a ton of shine on it because of the fact that UC Davis lost and their current record is 3-3. Three and three. I moved them at that like 28-ish spot, uh, a little bit on the outside. But they have a nice win. Their loss doesn't look great. Their loss improves because uh, NAU has picked up an additional win over um, Weber that they got last week. Yeah. So they're not as bad of a team as we we really thought that they were. But I think that Montana deserves to be ranked for that 5-1 and one record, and that's the furthest that they should really go. And anywhere inside the top 20 right now is, I think, a little bit too aggressive for me. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I put them at 19 just because uh, Northern Arizona was very strong. UC Davis had enough of a, you know, they have enough talent and enough skill for if you to beat them, they can come back on the ballot. But that's Montana's story this season on, off, on, off team. And eventually they're either going to have to stay on or stay off. If I'm projecting for the future, I think Montana stays off. It's going to be hard to be this wishwashy and then make it knowing how tough their schedule is. Knowing how tough that conference is, I I don't expect Montana to be in my final top 25, but they could surprise me. It's always moving, but there's been too much variance so far this season. It's really weird. The funny thing, too, with Montana is that there's just this big – you're either a super anti-Montana non-supporter or you're a Montana fan. And yeah. I've noticed, based on the comments on our videos, the Montana fans – think you're a Montana hater if you don't have them ranked in the top 10 like the coaches poll. So oh yeah, I want to reiterate this. I had a back and forth with somebody in the comments, and I'm like, this is unbelievable. The coaches poll is not a reliable source for ranking. And if you're wondering, they're coaches. Why would it not be reliable? Let me tell you how this process works. Mm. Their ballot comes in, and they go to a GA or an intern or the SID, and they ask them to fill it out for them because they don't have time on a Sunday – when they're preparing or going over the tape from the last game and you're going through walkthrough and your team's got lift and you're doing all that, I can promise you that most of the coaches don't look at that shit. It's a kid or GA or an SID that's doing it. And on top of that, you think that they're caught up and paying attention to with everything that's happening outside of their conference? No. So there's going to be a natural inclination to throw Montana at the 10 spot. We all know that their resume isn't great. It's good enough at five and one with a win over UC Davis to put them at 25. But outside of that, it's not justified. Somebody had a back and forth with me too on putting Eastern Washington ahead of them. I have them at 18. I don't know where you have them, Sean. They have a win, a pretty you know nice win against Southeastern Louisiana, who has been bad since they were ranked high early, and then a win over UC Davis. But their losses this early into the season were just at the halfway point are far more reputable than anything that Montana has done. 
In FCS, we have to count the losses because of the FBS matchups that happen. So for them to lose to North Dakota State, Fresno State by three points, and then to Idaho by a score, I think that that is, on paper, and also visually having watched this team, looks better than what Montana has put on film thus far this year. Uh, here's the, I have, uh, Eastern Washington at 21 behind. So I see them as a, basically a dead heat Montana, more wishwashy Eastern Washington, just like, ah, get there, just get there. And then you can make the big jump and it's gonna be tough. They're a good team. They're not a great team. Very similar to Montana. Good, not great, but Montana, uh, it, it's, it's tough. This, this, 18 to 25 section has been the bane of my existence because everybody is so knotted up in there where it could be one of one above one below one above one below. And then the next week, somebody in that range is just off immediately. They come back on. Uh, I I've been way more comfortable with my top tens than I have my bottom tens with the, with the poll, but Eastern Washington really, if they, they just need to catch momentum, uh, and it's it's just so difficult out there in the big sky. It's so difficult to get hot. Yeah, it's it's going to be a really tough battle too. And I think there's a lot of these these other top teams in the big sky too that are that are going to be um, you know prioritized as they've been so far. And talking about Idaho, talking about Sac State, they they've all done a lot more impressive things for Montana to be in the mix. And again, it's it's still understandable for them to be ranked. The other team that was a bit of a controversial one as well was Harvard. You didn't rank Harvard. I end up placing Harvard at 21. They're 4-0. They've kind of just beaten up on the back end crappy teams uh, in the Ivy League and on their schedule, but they do have a really impressive win with an undefeated record. They've played less games than everybody because the Ivy League starts later, but that Holy Cross win and his Holy Cross has looked still impressive even after the loss. I think that that justifies them being placed on the ballot. I know that we jokingly may have some bias against um, against the Ivy League. Their schedule hasn't been tough, but that Holy Cross win does look good. Yeah, uh, I mean, you look at Harvard and you remember, I, I've got so much cognitive dissonance with it because I know by the end of the year, I will have an Ivy, Ivy League team ranked. It's still too early for them to be ranked, in my opinion. They haven't gone through the trials yet. They do have the big win. I think they caught uh, Holy Cross lacking. I think Holy Cross took them lightly because they are Harvard. And that's what happened. Ivy League teams can catch you like that. We had many battles with Brown where mm. we knew we were a better team. We knew we were, we were a faster, stronger, uh, more athletic team. And then you go out there and you're looking at the fourth quarter and it's it's 28-28. So the Ivy Leagues can catch you. Uh, but knowing that and knowing what they have talent wise, what they have skill wise, I there it, it it's just not I'm just not ready to put one of their teams on my top 25. I think all the other 20, 25 teams have been more established, and I think uh they have earned their spots on my uh ballot. Uh Harvard or Yale or uh, I think Princeton was ranked pretty high a, a couple years ago. One of those teams, whoever Dartmouth won it, uh, I think was that 2020 or 2018, regardless. And Ivy will make it on, I believe, uh, unless it becomes a total mess. But right now, uh, they are staying off for me. I I respect you for acknowledging resume over if you were to play hypothetical matchup. I respect that way that you go about your poll. I no wait, I do, but I do both. I do resume and. It's a mix of a resume and a power rating on how good I think that these teams are. I go, I go a little more. Re uh, I don't know what I go. I mean, I go a little resume, a little. It, it's tough because I sit here and I make my argument and I say, okay, Harvard. There's an argument to be made for him, but I don't think Harvard could beat you or I. I don't think Harvard could beat Albany. I don't think our, our, uh, uh, Harvard could beat Chattanooga, and those are my bottom three right now. And I'm just, I, I, I just can't put them on for that reason. At this moment, I, I don't I don't hate that logic. Um, I I actually I, I push back a little bit. I think that Harvard plays for how they played against Holy Cross. I think is an indicator for me that that's not really like a totally fluky win. And, and Harvard actually has an underrated roster. Like Thor Griffith is a really talented NFL prospect type of a defensive lineman. 
uh, and they've got some other bodies in their offensive line. I, I just, I think that maybe this is one of those ones where we see them differently. I think we do. And that's fine. That's why there's multiple polls mm. uh, and not just one. North Carolina Central is a pig riser this week after they they had a win against um oh my god who did they wait 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 I have it I've it written down North Carolina Central had a really nice win against Campbell and then they had a pretty defiant victory against Elon where they won 34 to 23 I think amongst all of the uh the MIAC the SWAC programs it's been proven to me with that win that NCCU is the best amongst those teams. I do have FAMU at 19. I think that they showed some really nice stuff against Jackson State. But the best resume out of any of the teams that are really behind them, I think that NCCU has a phenomenal resume. Their singular loss was to UCLA. Yeah, it was to UCLA. I don't know why I didn't write that down. Their singular loss was to UCLA. So this is basically an undefeated team that has a win over a previously ranked CAA team. Now I said that I think that um, Elon was unjustifiably ranked last week, but at the same time, NCCU continues to look really good. Yeah. They have really impressed me this season. Uh, I caught a little bit of flack beginning of the year. Uh, Cause I thought they were going to have a main esque season where they win the conference for the first time in a while. And then they don't replicate it, but boy, are they replicating it? They are playing good defense. They are lighting it up on offense. Uh, Davius Richard is, he has been lights out all year. When they, their, their win over Campbell was huge for me because both those teams play a similar style. Both those teams, uh, they they run and pass through their quarterback and NCCU was able to pull it out. So that, that was a huge win for me seeing, okay, it's not just a win over a different opponent, i.e. Seahawks beating Broncos in the Super Bowl, offense versus defense. This is, you two are similar. You two are going head up. Who's going to win? That's who gets ranked. And NCCU won, and they they've just been rolling. I don't even I, I don't foresee them losing another game this year. I don't foresee them leaving my bracket. They got Morgan State, South Carolina State, Norfolk State, Howard, Delaware State. I think they I think clean sweep through the rest of the year, and they can get in the top ten. Maybe maybe at the ten nine range. Western Carolina ends up landing at number six for me after their win over Chattanooga. Look, I got to be honest, and, you know, remove remove my my interactions that I've had with the Western Carolina fans that uh, for some reason don't like me, um, uh, even though I like their team. They have, I think, arguably maybe the best resume out of any of these um any of these top 10 programs, you've got a, a dominant 77 to 21 win over Charleston Southern, a 27 to 24 win over Eastern Kentucky, 49 to 14 win over the Citadel, 30 to 7 over Sanford. And then this past week, a win over a just outside the top 25 Chattanooga team for me. Their resume is great. I know that Desmond Reed is hurt. I don't know the timetable for his return and his recovery, but I think offensively they have looked really good. I feel like that there might eventually be a bit of a ceiling for them. And what I mean by that is I will, unless South Dakota State, Montana State, Idaho, Sac State, actually, no, let me rephrase. Unless Sac State, North Dakota State, or Idaho lose a couple of games, I don't foresee myself putting Western Carolina ahead of them. Just because that those teams, even if one of them suffers a singular loss or has a close win over a weaker in-conference team, their schedules are just so much more difficult. People get mad when we try to do this. The you know, oh, what's, you know, why are we comparing schedules? It happens with the SEC all the time, but there is a lot of truth to that when you have similar records. Yeah, I have them at 11, and that's just because nobody in the top 10 did enough for me to boot them out of the top 10. Obviously, uh, during the, the crazy-ass week two weeks ago, where North Dakota State lost, uh, William Mary lost, Holy Cross lost. We're looking at, I, I'm, I'm like, okay, you can't be, you're not in the top five anymore. You can't be in the top five. You're still very good programs. You lost, but you're staying in the top 10. Western Carolina, best team outside of the top 10. They have been good. They have been strong. They have a massive game this week against West Car uh, uh, Furman. Massive. And I wait, Furman, wait, wait, wait. They're not, they're not playing Furman this week. Oh, uh, uh, that next week, next week, next week. Next yeah. Week. Pardon me. Pardon me. Uh, uh, regardless, two weeks, massive week. They'll probably stay at 11 for me. Uh, I don't. How do you approach I, – I don't know how to approach the buys. If somebody has a really good win significantly, I can have them jump them, but I do not like dropping teams when they're coming off by. 
I won't move a team after an FBS loss or a bye week unless a team behind them had a really, really good win. That's my approach. That's the only reason why I'll do it. Yeah, so I could see them sticking at 11, and then in two weeks, uh, they could make a big jump, and that that Furman, we could do a full-on Yankee swap and, and just say, all right, Furman, because this is going to be a head-to-head matchup, two very competitive teams, two highly ranked teams. Uh, so looking at it, in that sense, going to my roots, if you beat that team, you should be higher than that team, with the exception of few, very few. In this instance, uh, that would be that. And uh, Western Carolina right now, just just peeking right in on the top 10. I think I'm comfortable with them at 11. Last one that I wanted to get to was a little bit of a debate that we were having that you wanted to bring up. Was the placement of Delaware and William & Mary. So I dropped William & Mary a good bit. They had a close loss-ish against UVA, and then they suffered the one loss against, again, I am going to repeat this, an Elon team that I did not think deserved to be ranked when they were ranked um, by some on their ballots. I am much higher on Delaware because of that win against UNH and the fact that they've looked pretty strong in the rest of their games. For me, William and Mary is is starting to show some signs of weakness. And I think that we also really saw that. I think it was the Campbell game. They've had too many close skirting by wins for me to be like, this is a top 10 team. I the think Charleston their Southern game was tough, the 15 to 7. That, that I don't like hurt. that. I do not like that. That in the Campbell game, I'm not a big fan of. I really think that William and Mary is a good team, top of the CAA type team. But Delaware right now has shown to me that they're the best through this many weeks. Yeah, they've put up some good games. I Their UNH win, a little bit diminished now. I, I, I look at Delaware and I respect their resume so far, but they've beaten Stony Brook, St. Francis, New Hampshire, and Duquesne. They lost to Penn State. I, I'm not super sold on them, and I still think William Mary is built with enough of the right stuff to catch fire on the back end of the season, and I think they... They're still a very well-built team. They're close in my rankings. I have William Mary at eight, and I have Delaware at 10. So I'm respecting the offense of Delaware. Uh, UNH has slipped, slipped, slipped. So that's a, that's a bit of a diminishment. That's not a word, but it diminishes it a little bit uh, for Delaware. It's not their fa- fault. It's not their problem. They still won. But when I'm looking at it objectively, I'm like, ah, you beat UNH. Maybe UNH wasn't that good. Maybe Dylan Lobb just had a couple stellar games that, that took everybody – you know, mm. took everyone's breath away. So right now they're sitting at 10. I'm cool with them at 10. Uh, they don't play each other during the regular season. They do not. Delaware still has NCA and T, Hampton, Towson, Elon, Campbell, Villanova. So I, I mean, both these teams are going to make the playoff. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure both yeah. of them are going to make the playoff because the rest, like they, they haven't had a terribly difficult stretch. And that Villanova game for Delaware is going to be tough. And then the... um. Yeah, William Mary doesn't have a, a a super big buzzsaw that they're looking down the looking down the line at. Towson, Monmouth, Albany, Hampton, Richmond. So they're both going to make it. They'll probably be one and two in the CAA, either or, however it shakes out. But right now, uh, I think it's fair to have them a little bit close, but swapped. I think you're a little low on William Mary, though. Nah. At Joe DeLeon, at Sanderson Radio, thanks for tuning in to our ballot breakdown let us know what you think in the comments. We'll be back with more.